little bit grey and windy today but I wanted to show you the back garden because it's been a little while since we've had a look and because it's possible that a path might get strimmed through it so I want to show you what it looks like before that happens. Uh, so first of all let's have a look at the ground elder I nearly forgot what it was called. So as you um, just as a recap um, you probably know but this is a plant that it said that the Romans introduced as a foodstuff and it has since become what many people would call a weed because it spreads really readily even the tiniest bit of root left in the ground or a little nodule there's little nodules along their length and they will just make new ground elder plants and you know I suppose you could say they are a nuisance they do pop up in the vegetable beds as well obviously because they're right along the edge but I'm, I am really of the opinion that to live and let live with them because I can't do anything else really. I'll never get all this ground elder out. And actually, if you only have it where you don't mind it being, then, you know, there's nothing, it's a, it's a different mindset, but it's actually fine. And you can eat it. Not that I have tried eating it. I mem remember we used to have lots of it in the kind of woodland bit of our garden when I was a child. And my mum always used to... I, talk about cooking it but I'm not even sure whether she ever did or whether we turned our nose probably turned our noses up at it anyway uh, as, as a kind of greens you know cooked greens but uh, not not that be that as it may I have when I want when I wanted to make space down here next to the edge of the raised bed I've just cut it back with uh, secateurs up till now which obviously is not particularly effective but if I just chopped at it with shears or even if I was strimming and strimmed it down as much as I needed to I think it would be fine and where you do want something else you just put something else which is also quite strong like lemon balm or mint next to it and I think the two will kind of give each other as good as they get so I don't see it really as a problem I might be in the minority here anyway to move on I found these and they must be a kind of allium I guess but I found these while I'm calling them wildflowers because I didn't sow them or plant them uh, just here among the among the other vegetation and that was lovely because I've not seen them before I'm sure they weren't here last year they've just arrived by themselves I haven't gone as far as looking them up yet but I will do but somebody here might know what they are anyway before I even look them up I don't know but I like them I think they must be an allium surely that kind of flower but I'll let you know as you can see cow parsley as well behind here and as here's some lemon balm, talking of lemon balm. And again, not planted, but it's arrived. Beautiful herb. In fact, I should try and use some of this before it goes, it, it, it goes a bit rank as it starts to flower. It, the leaves aren't quite so good. So I do need to perhaps dry some of that. Here is where I was going to make a path through. And as I haven't done so, it's knee high, thigh high, I don't know, pretty high. The trees are looking really clothed now it's a lovely alder tree it's not the tallest one though the tallest one we're just going to look at in a moment the, the bird cherries are really growing a lot as well this one that's straight ahead of us here with a kind of bigger top is a is a is a bird cherry so it's a wild cherry not i can't see any fruit on it but they aren't really for me they are for the birds they're not they're a bit small and hard and um, bitter i think for our tastes but i think the birds will enjoy them lovely periwinkle which again i've just picked some little bits of well just stem really out of the woods where they were and put them in the ground and put it well not even in the ground on the ground with a bit of earth over and they've gone mad again you might find that a problem periwinkle could be too much for a garden but it's really covering the ground really nicely so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it and hear the wind chimes it's quite windy today this is a dark I think it's a dark dogwood rather than a dark willow Can't, no, yeah I think it is now the buttercups have been very lovely they've been left unchecked so to speak which like everything else but i think they're so beautiful and so are the aquilegias which we will look at in more detail the aquilegias as ever this alder is already setting i think i showed you before it was setting cones but the cones are now looking much more cone sized 
just green but of course they will turn a brown colour like the old ones you can still see some of the old ones from last year clinging on lots and lots of cones this year new ones ever so many it's really full of them I don't know what that signifies if anything now the thistles let me see if I can show you how tall the tallest thistles are um, let's see is that shoulder height I don't know if I can can't really show you but it's up to I yeah it's up to my shoulder what's my shoulder the tallest ones in fact there's a taller one just beyond there which is probably um, halfway up my head not so I'm going to be testing that one out you hear the birds so I'm not sure what that is I can hear could be the robin now this whorehound is it's spread out a bit here because it's been really dry and I haven't watered it's really hard to know what to water in this part of the garden I think I will have to though because we haven't had any rain for absolutely ages and so some of the fruit trees are looking really yellow I mean the leaves are looking yellow where they more you know, yellow, yellower than they should that's what I'm trying to say I'm just showing you really what's happened but I'm not really every time I see a bit of bindweed I'm not saying oh look the bindweed has covered this plant but they, it, they have basically and the sweet Sicily is another thug that I used to always pull out and now I've given up on it for now but you can see it's a lovely herb but it's one of those herbs that you it might be better in a container perhaps if you don't want it absolutely everywhere it's got lovely aniseed scent and you can use the little these little green um what would you uh, seed pods i suppose they are they've got an and you can crush them they smell of aniseed but, oh they actually smell lovely and you can cook them with fruit uh for example and it sweetens it without you don't need to use so much sweetening apparently and i've got so much here i should be using it <laughs> let's come and have a look at the seating area which i use every day but uh, I think I'm just marvelling at what's happening to it rather than actually acting upon it because I'm just doing lots of other things, that's the trouble. I'm doing a lot of writing at the moment and well that's my main thing I'm doing I suppose really and clearing my mum's house. So this is a south thistle which again is really tall, kind of, um, I don't know, approaching chest height I suppose. And there are more around the picnic table oh, it's quite a picnic table the little table and now the legs of the table are completely obscured and the bindweed is really having fun coming through but there's still space the thing is while there's still space for me to put my um coffee mug down there then i just put my coffee mug, mug down there and a snack or whatever and um I, you know I, it's, it's doing the job so that's as far as I get the other chair you can see I haven't had a friend um, with me having coffee for a while because it hasn't been moved it's just been uh, it would be moved next to the table if it was going to be used and this is the bindweed that's come right up twined around the back of it here so in order to move it which it will actually it will happen today because friend is coming who is going to help me I think with trimming a path oh look that bumblebee they just love it they do just love it it would be lovely just to leave it all and I am sort of leaving it all but all I really am going to do is just li literally have a path through avoiding of course the aquilegias um, just where I'm walking we'll just lower that it's not not that there are nettles really just here so it's not painful to walk around but it would be nice to be able to go right round the back because if you look here this would be the path round the back of the garden round to the compost heap and then back round to the vegetables and you literally you can't actually do that because the way is barred by these thistles here uh, so yeah it is kind of it is necessary I think really and there's cow parsley beautiful over there a bit beyond as well that will go because it will be part of where it has to be strimmed but you know it's not going to be deterred <laughs> it's not exactly going to be deterred forever so really what we've seen before is what's still here but it's all bigger i think that's the main thing we can glean from this little tour um lots more thistles and i was really that the thistles i know i've said this several times but this was the one thing i was hoping to actually uh, keep on top of and haven't done 
they just absolutely love this garden when I first saw the garden there were thistles at the end not as many as there are now of course but uh, yeah and they were really big then so I think it just suits it just suit the, I know that plants like this are going to like it wherever they can get a foothold because that's why they're so such good survivors but I think they particularly like the conditions here although so did the aquilegias look at that beautiful one the purple ones are not my favourites, but they are lovely nonetheless. My favourites are usually the pinky ones, which I can see a pinky one here. Here, yeah, it's a nice one. And there's some even, even more delicate ones elsewhere in the garden. Behind it, this silvery leafed plant here is sea buckthorn. And I've made a kind of little hedge here um, of them. There's, I think, there were probably five, like there were of lots of the shrubs that I bought as hedging, and then they, some of them have grown into trees. And I, I, I actually put them in a row, and they were going to um, outline the grassy area, which, if you look beyond where all the uh, all the plants are, the sweet sisley we were just looking at, and there's uh, thistles, of course, and there's also um, angelica, that is where the grassy area was always intended to be. So I can still see where it's going to be or where it was meant to be. There are, I mean, I'm not going through everything at the moment, as you, as you know, but um, this side of the garden here is not, that diff not as difficult to deal with because there's an edge to it. I'll show you the edge, a uh, wooden edge down here. So beyond that is where the fruit bushes are and trees and when I have a moment or two, I shall hopefully get in. I know I always say this, you're probably laughing hearing me say this, but I shall get in here and at least um, allow some of these fruit trees to have a bit of space and put some compost around them. These are poppies, which I used to always take out because they, again, they take up a lot of space really. And they're very, they're very keen as well. But this year, and I think last year, I more or less just let them happen really. This is willow herb. We could actually do a wildflower walk in the garden. Maybe we will one of these videos and just look at the wildflowers that have come here. Um, the black currants are really coming on nicely as well. And there's loads of fruit on this. I'm not sure what it is. It's one of these kind of um, uh, hybrids like a Tabery or something or Loganbury or something. But um, actually it's got masses and masses of fruit on, which is really lovely to see. And I can see some baby apples, which is also very lovely to see. Here, look. I've worked my way back round to the vegetable beds. And so I thought I'd show you because I've done some things here, as you can see. And actually, they're coming up quite nicely, some of the plants. So we've got broad beans that look quite good. And there's some radishes down here. There are uh, little weeds in between, but they're not, not, not too bad. And there's potatoes, which are coming on really nicely just here as well. And across, uh, well, I'll, I'll actually step round and show you around here. There's rowan flowers, just perhaps coming to past their best now. And this is the next bed, and there's uh, garlic in the front. And there's peas, but they are getting nibbled. They are, the others are as well. So I think I'm going to, I thought they, I got away with it, but I think I'm going to have to put some black thread over because I think they're going to be nibbled away to nothing so they won't be able to grow. They're the remains of leeks, which I shall have to take out, I think now. And there's little, I, mean, I can't tell you what everything is because I, said, I think I said last time I didn't label them. I can tell better once they start coming up, but I'm pretty sure there's some spinach there, lettuce, little carrots coming up here. This is, these are carrots here and um, lots of radishes. I do love radishes and they grow so well. I think I got a bit carried away, but you can just see the red where they're just starting to swell out and hopefully become radishes very soon. They're only look, they're not, they're looking knocked over because I just watered them. So uh, they'll sand themselves up very soon. And got onions just here, which are again doing quite well. Lovely lemon balm in the side bed and um, lovely honesty as well. So lots of, lots of other things, you know, around the sides as well, which I don't always talk about, but I uh, like there's, there's a cherry tree here, which has got some cherries on. And that's a, that's a Morello cherry, I imagine. I think I'd have put that on the north side, yeah. 
and there's quite a lot of cherries on there and they were really nice last year and I think there'll be at least as many this year back round to the last bed which has got garlic along the end again the seeds haven't come up so well here I'm probably going to re-sow well I will I'll just I'll weed this area and re-sow I can see a little row here it's because I didn't water at the right time when it was dry just only for a couple of days but I think it just stopped them starting I can see little I can see some of vegetable seedlings coming up but there aren't they're not they're a bit sparse shall we say so I shall yeah I shall re-sow or I've got some little plants coming on in modules that I can I can put in there this is the old parsley and it is taking up rather a lot, a lot of space but I wanted to, a, a there's still you know still usable parsley on there and also it's just about to flower so I can save seed I'm not sure because it's taking up so much space I might take it out or take I'll work it out or maybe just leave one for seed or we'll work it out <laughs> basically I'll work it out but this side I this was sown a little bit before the other side of the parsley so these are coming on quite well there's more here they again they're all flattened but that's only because I've just watered them and they'll need thinning out but you know that's probably quite soon I'll be doing that and there's beetroot here and turnips that's basically what we've got here and I think some kale as well so the the turnip these are the turnip leaves there's golden turnips and there are the purple topped ones the sort of familiar color of turnips as well so this I think this is kale here uh, so that'll be really nice if it comes you know if it comes to fruition and these little ones here hmm, what are they I think they might be so a smell oh that's coriander lovely I'll get some more coriander in because that's a lovely herb to have it was really good last year and this just as you can see almost encroaching into the beds are all the lovely wild plants as well you've got the herb robert here cleavers we've got black fly on the cleavers and it's getting a bit old now but there's the jack jack by the hedge garlic mustard and that white blossom is uh gelder rose so it's and that, that'll have lovely berries for the work for wildlife and i'll just move the camera around one just one more little bit and that is the nettles at the back of the garden and then there's elder can you see the elder tree back there it's in blossom but the nettles there they're the ones i will have to strim a path through so i can actually get back around which will be nice to do nice to have and there'll still be plenty left you know you always worry about taking what i think um wild wild plants and useful and helpful plants and lovely plants out and they're very good food for well um red admirals for example lay their eggs on them but i think there's just going to have to be a path through and the rest can the rest uh can stay and see bee over bee over there on the comfrey and there's another apple tree that was a lovely apple tree last year so that is something i'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that one i think that completes the tour of the garden so i hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit of wild and um probably seeing some of the bees as we went around as well there are lots of different seems, kinds of bumblebee it seems in the garden which is really a joy and one just flew across then I've just given the front garden a little drink because it's been really really dry here it's been really quite strange weather very dry but quite cold northeasterly wind really odd but today's quite warm and nice hazy sunshine so I thought I would take the opportunity having seen how much everything's grown to give you another little tour and particularly to showcase the most beautiful rose in the world I think which is called Desdemona and you might remember this rose from before but it's out in the full glory right now and it's got the most glorious scent and they're very lovely when they're not properly open as well like this one really lovely now, it's rather overhanging the gate uh, because I haven't found a way of propping it back satisfactorily because it's just so keen to grow so we can get through though so I'll just uh, push push through and we'll have a look it's really lush everywhere I think you'll be quite surprised even since we last had a look because when I said last time there was no bare earth visible it's all the more so now it's really really absolutely filled out the garden 
So what we can see is not only is the Desdemona rose out, but there also, I don't know if you can see here, is some of this, the other rose here I have, which is called Boscobel. And that's a beautiful one as well. Because it's set further back, you don't tend to smell it so much, but I know it's a beautifully scented rose. I picked all of them um, for ones that said strongly, strongly scented. And there are other plants here which are just coming up now, coming to the fore, like this one here, which is the cultivated burnet, which will have really, really tall flowers, um, like little bobbly flowers later on. So we'll go through the willow arch, which isn't a pro still isn't a proper willow arch, but it's just tied up in order to make it easier to get through. But it's lovely and green. So we'll go through, and I think we might just start. I think we might just start here. It's always quite hard to know where to start. And it's just lots of green, basically. A lovely lady's um, mantle here, which is now flowering. This is the one last time we were looking at. We were just looking at the drops of the drops of water, moisture that gather on the leaves. This is how it gets its name, of Alcamilla. It's like an alchemy, uh, an alchemist's jewel, really. But it's now got the flowers as well, which is always lovely. I love these yellowy green kind of flowers. The Emily Bronte rose is not out yet, but it's going to have loads of flowers on it, I think. So that's exciting. I've just let it grow up in front of the sitting room window. So when that flowers, this will be really nice to look out onto. The crab apple tree is growing up quite a lot, but it still hasn't had any blossom on. And there's also, well, the rose has grown up really high as well. That's Lady of the Lake. And we come through and across and it's covered the now covering really nicely the trellis at the moment which is good thing you can hear the sparrows as usual they're protesting i think that i'm in their garden <laughs> they really are i've got stereo sparrows there some in the eaves or the gutter and some of them in the hedge here and we've got the hazel which is uh, i think put out even more leaves probably since we were last looking the sparrow just dived into the hedge. Probably can't see him. I can. Um, he's quite camouflaged. He just hopped down in, in among the holly leaves. And there's what's happened now since we last looked as well is that the geraniums have come out. These hardy geraniums, which are so lovely because they just are so happy everywhere. They like everything really. They and they're they're one of the few plants that are happy in dry shade. Not that this is particularly dry shade, but they will they will grow there. So if they'll grow there, they'll grow in most places. This one's out as well, the pale pink one. And there's a, the dark morning widow one. I think we saw that last time, but it's probably more of the flowers are out now. And purple aquilegia. I don't plan the aquilegias, they just come up wherever they like. Uh, but luckily, I suppose, for the scheme of this garden, which tends to be pinks and purples and bronzy colours really the aquilegias will always be a kind of pink pinks or purples so they'll fit in you never well the ones i i get hybridizing anyway never seem to be bright red or yellow which wouldn't really fit in here so they're always very welcome and there's also another slightly darker pink geranium here they were just brought as the tiniest little plants outside the place i used to get um, free range eggs from so um, there were li literally just little tiny plants outside there and they've spread as i knew they would and co covers quite a lot of the ground there's a lovely lovely clematis out here which is climbing up beside the old door and there's bud i think that usually with clematis and the flowers are beautiful but the the buds are beautiful as well they've just got this real elegance about them as you can probably see here and the rose that's climbing up has got masses of buds high up here i'll just show you and that's called new dawn there's one each side of the doorway but the one on this side has grown a lot more than the other one for whatever reason interesting because they're both planted together I think possibly because the gutter leaks just there so it gets a lot more moisture over 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 the year and the bronze fennel here so it adds a really lovely feathery presence despite all the leafiness the garden guardian and the frog are still quite there we are they've still got their own places if we crouch down we can still see them quite easily the frog's a bit hidden under those leaves let's see if we can focus in 
looking in his element actually at the moment because it's quite wet around him where I've been watering. And the thyme that I planted here has all spread out to join up and that was uh, as a kind of a sort of doormat really between the worlds. So the idea being, if you haven't seen, I think I might have mentioned this before, but not for a long time. This is the old front door, which isn't a front door anymore, but the door's still here. And it has the step or the, um, what would you call it? It's not really a step because it's level, but you know, the slab in front of it. And then the garden starts. So the idea of the time is one thing, of course, it smells lovely. And another play on the word time because you kind of step out of time into the fairy realm in this front garden. It's a really tiny space. I never feel I can do justice to explaining how tiny it is, but it really is only a couple, I don't know, I don't have, I, I struggle with meterage, but I don't know, three or four meters across and th five or six meters long, maybe at the, I don't really know. I always measure it one time, I'll let you know then. But it's very small anyway. So it's, for me, it's actually at quite an ideal size because I can have it wild, and, and ha but at the same time, it's a kind of wild that um, I can look after, which is the kind of co-creation, really, which I think uh, is probably a very, very lovely way of approaching it. I'm really happy with this garden. The only thing would be, if you wanted to add more to it, it would be really hard to add anything else because it's completely full. But it's completely full, and I, and I think... Um, a way which gives you something for all the seasons or at least most of the seasons because you've got things that are flowering now and then there's the Jap these are here are Japanese anemones um, which will be flowering later in the summer and so will this which is the Hellenium and they're a late summer flower as well so there'll be more of interest later on and then there'll be the seed heads in the winter time as well Oh, so we'll say goodbye to the sparrows. One of them just flew off from the bush into the gutter again. And come back and visit another time.